evening. Uh, long day, long night. Mm, brain fried, brain frazzle. A lot of people messaging me talking about the lack of help that they received when they approached GPs and stuff. Uh, I've heard this so many times now. I've been speaking about this now on and off for a couple of years, maybe longer. It's the the problem is gigantic. The scale of the problems, you know, unfathomable. We just we're only scratching the surface. Uh, I won't ever like have a go at the people in the in the jobs because they're probably absolutely snowed the bureaucracy and paperwork and all the rest of it that they get very little time to do the actual job which is counselling and you know analysing people and getting people in the right track and getting them better so it's something that us as individuals can do we are no experts but a kind word goes a long way stopping intervention just an action stopping somebody and talking to somebody uh, I've had a couple of things in the past year or two, uh, guys, you know, late at night, talking about, you know, stepping into rivers and stuff, just horrific, horrific events. And that the, they feel that they've been totally ignored by the system or they've been told it'll be a year before they can speak to somebody. And that's really common. That's not myth. Uh, I spoke to a parent who said about her child, you know, or her niece, it was a, uh, they were getting told, you know, 10, 12 months for appointments and stuff. I hear this so many times. It's no, a, uh, it's not like hearsay, you know, how people say, oh, I couldn't, couldn't wait and I get told I had to wait for, well, it's true, it's actually happening. The time scales for appointments because the system's so broken and so saturated and, uh, there's just not enough people there's not enough money getting invested in it and everything is about dollars and cost codes and pound signs but people's life shouldn't be not in this country if we didn't uh, squander so much in crap and send so much abroad in aid you know where it's stolen before it reaches the source stolen by organisations stolen by tyrants uh, nothing ever gets there I'm, I'm afraid you know nothing ever gets to the to the root of the problem would be as well investing that in fixing young people and fixing vulnerable people with idiots you know really fixing them not just fobbing them off the medication programs and you know three monthly appointment appointments that total five six seven minutes that's not good enough the system is mental and the more i learn about it the more i speak to the professionals in it they're all burdened by the strain of it and most of them will openly admit that the amount of time they actually get in a week to do their job in a you know, 30, 40 hour week is minimal because of paperwork and bureaucracy and systems being overloaded and systems broken down and systems being regenerated re and they're just shattered and everybody in that game seems to be shattered. It's got such little funding. You know, it makes you deeply suspicious because of when you see the millions getting squandered in absolute crap elsewhere. Uh, I've had a few things where I've bumped into people or somebody's messaged me, usually strangers, who are deeply troubled, struggling. They've watched a video that's given them a little bit of inspiration. That's brilliant to hear it, but it's not the answer because it's... Although it's temporarily pet somebody up, usually their problems are so significant, you know, that they're already dangerously close to, you know, just an unfortunate, a bad end or, you know, our health. So, so, there's so much to fix. You know, I was talking to a friend of mine and we were talking about the importance of good nutrition and feeding the brain and stimulating the brain with proper nutrition, proper balanced diets not binging and gorging and fizzy sugary drinks and living in energy drinks and you know crap cheap processed takeaway foods finding proper nu nutrition is a huge part of your mental well-being if you feed yourself correctly and you nutritionally charge your brain with the correct stuff honestly it's such a massive part of the of everything and uh, you can find so much balance by eating just correctly 
and doing a little bit of fitness, you know, getting your body in shape. You've got one job in life, which is to look after the body. And, and if you maintain a, a level of fitness and, you know, not let your body get out, outrageously destroyed with bad foods and too much sugars and alcohol, too much anything's bad. A little bit of anything's fine, but don't abuse it and don't overload your body because your body will respond in a way you don't want. It will it will enlarge and it will throw on weight, it will withhold water, you know, it will start to do things and pressure your joints and see when your body's out of sync, your mind's out of sync, it's all the same machine. We talk about fitness, you know, I'm, I'm not a fitness guru, I've just tried to keep myself in kind of relatively usable shape for that rainy day should I never, ever need to use physical strength to get out of a situation or you know, physical and mental strength in conjunction with one another to think my way out of a situation or think my way out of danger or just haul myself out of something or lift myself or, or lift something off myself. I've always tried to I've always tried to expect the unexpected. You know? I'm I'm always ready for the next thing. I like to think, you know, if I did ever trip and slip and fall in somewhere, I had the strength to get out or swim out or just whatever. You know, the chances of it are slim, but there is always a chance, and as long as there's a chance, I want to be prepared. Uh, being unprepared is not in my... It's not in my makeup. I, I'm always prepared. I want to be prepared. I want to be ready. Because if I let myself down through something that I could have improved on, that's unforgivable to yourself. No one else, just yourself. That's just my mindset, it's the way I am and I understand it's not the way everybody is. Some people never expect the unexpected, but I have to, it's just my life. Uh, and I know that sounds quite extreme, but I'm quite an extreme person. If you follow me at all, you'll realise that, you would know anyway. I do, I'm quite an extreme person and I do do things to the extremes, I always have. It's just the way I am, it's what, it's what works for me. Uh, and I've had my demons in my, my dark days and I've had the, the black dog and the clouds and the darkness. I've had it. I've had it in abundance. had more than my fair share of it. But it's it's becoming so prevalent. It's, it's every day I'm seeing and I'm hearing and I'm discussing and talking and people are sending me stuff and I just, I believe so much of it is fixable. You know, we're not far away from the source of the problems normally. We can we can root them out and get to them and get to people before it gets to be something that we can't control. I think you as individuals have got a responsibility to look around you. And, you know, if you see somebody that's not right or something, don't turn the, the other cheek. Just try and do something about it. Try and intervene. Try and help somebody. Sometimes a kind word's all it takes. A wee shoulder, a wee arm, a wee punty up. Just a wee cup of tea. See, just putting the kettle on for somebody. Honestly, 10 minutes. What a massive difference that makes. When somebody messages me that's generally a stranger and they say, oh, I watched something you said and it kind of rung bells with me or it perked me up. You don't know what that's worth to me. I, there's, you can't put a price in that. That's worth... That's worth the early rises, it's worth the late nights, it's worth the freezing cold temperatures, it's worth the discomfort, it's worth all of the things I do, you know, I don't relax and lie on a couch and have a television, I don't have any of that, I, I deliberately don't have any of that, uh, I put myself in discomfort in order to let myself know I'm living, and let myself know why I'm doing it and continually remind myself, you know, why I'm out here, I'm out here because if what I'm doing is helping somebody somewhere, and it apparently is, and it seems to be, however small, that's good enough for me. That is payment in itself. I don't care if anybody's got a negative opinion of what I'm doing. I'm not interested. I really don't care less. When folk are positive and they let me know that a wee bit of my positive message is rubbed off in them, that's gold. That's gold to me. You can't put a price on it. So... Lately I've seen a few things and, you know, yesterday and just the past few weeks, it, it really, really shapes you and moulds you. 
and it reminds you how lucky you are if you do have a fresh kind of mindset and you are in a decent shape. It reminds you how lucky you are to be that person and to not have a massive amount of burden in your shoulders. I think we're all guilty of, you know, f being, having such tunnel vision and focusing on ourselves that we can forget those round about us and there are lesser people that, lesser strength, lesser will, le lesser self power, just a medical imbalance, just a, you know, a chemical imbalance going on with them through no fault of their own. Not everybody's a substance abuser, not everybody's a drinker or a, you know, or taking class A or B drugs. Not everybody is poisoning themselves. Some are, a huge percentage will be, but not everybody is. Some folk have, are just born with bad luck. And those people need help. And if they're not getting it from the authorities, they should surely be getting it from their friends and their neighbours and people that claim to know them and care about them. And even strangers just looking out for somebody. The amount of times that you go through your life and you might have walked past somebody and you, should have, you, you say to yourself, I should have stopped and asked that guy if he was all right or, you know, don't ever kick yourself. Just stop and ask the question. 30 seconds out of your day could change the course of somebody's existence on earth forever. And that's got to be worth something. That's the way I see it. It's got to be worth something. And I think we can embarrass the hell out of the authorities by being the people and standing up for each other and helping those that are lesser, giving them a punty up, giving them a kind word, empowering them, strengthening them. You know, there is there are weak people out there through no fault of their own. They're just unfortunately weak spirited people they don't have strength of mind they don't have strength of character they don't have willpower and abundance they just don't have it what they do have is they're probably no bad people they're just they've, they've just not got the confidence to be out there and doing it and building themselves up they need help so help them help somebody pay it forward we, we all know what the saying is if one person helps one person and that one person helps one and one becomes ten and ten becomes a thousand, it makes us, makes the world a better place and it makes being a human being a little bit more bearable because at this moment in time, being a human being is literally unbearable because it's just bad press everywhere. It's bad people, it's bad energy, it's bad karma and it's horrible to see and that's why folk do shut themselves away because they're just sick of it. They're sick of reading it and seeing it and living it. Well, let's change it then. Only we can change it. Th those in power don't care because there's a divide there. They put the, they close their doors to their mansions at night and lock out the bad. Whereas the rest of us, we have to live and breathe it. So don't let them beat us. You know, we can win the fight ourselves and we can help the weaker people in society to strengthen and empower themselves and build themselves up. Because they need it, they need it, and they and they deserve it. Because not there's you know they're not bad people. Just uh, sometimes putting your hand down and giving somebody a way up will will change the course of that person's life, and it's worth doing. So things this week have made me think a lot more as well, and uh, anything that can increase me as a person and better me as a person. I'm prepared to do it, regardless of who says what and regardless of who laughs and sniggers and points fingers. You you don't live in my world and you and you couldn't stand in my shoes. So keep your negativity to yourself. I'm not interested. I'm only interested in hearing for people that want to help somebody and be decent. Just be de generally decent people. I think it's in us all to do it. It's in us all to change. It's in us all to step away from our pasts and be, be good and just be good decent folk and that's the name of the game we are painted a certain way by the media and all the rest of it you know and it's not a true reflection of who we are we are the real folk so let's let's be the real folk let's keep it real and set examples that's what I've been thinking about the night anyway guys I wish you the best of health and Going into the weekend, hope everybody's safe and happy and 
living the way that he's want to be living. Because if you're not, then you have to change it. And that starts with you. Alright? As always, take care, stay safe, stay healthy. Cheers.